Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about level three. And I call level three the publish level of business because this is really the level where you start to find your stride and you start to get out there and things start to feel like they're running smoothly. There are a couple of major mistakes and missteps that entrepreneurs make at this point though, and I'm gonna be talking about those in this video. So characteristics of the level three phase. It is all about the business. This is the phase where entrepreneurs really start to feel confident about the business that they're running. They start to hold their shoulders back. They're charging what they're worth, um, and they're starting to see the benefits of um, putting these systems in place. They're starting to see the fruits of their labor. Revenue increases at this point. Um, most businesses, level three businesses, operate um, between a $35,000 and a $50,000, maybe a little bit more, maybe $65,000 annual revenue stream. So there's definitely some profitability in there, but not a whole lot just yet. Um, another thing that happens at this stage is entrepreneurs start to need additional help. And you start to need to um, find a virtual assistant or hire a bookkeeper, uh, but you start to need to rely on other people um, to help you in your business. And it makes the struggle for profitability real. Um, as your expenses start to increase, you have to find a way to increase your revenue to get to the lifestyle that you want as an entrepreneur that we talked about back in module one. So in levels one and two, um, you've been trying to put all of that framework in place. And so because it doesn't always happen, just like we imagine it will at level three, it's easy for entrepreneurs to get stuck here. And we're gonna talk about what you need to do in level three to make sure that you make the jump to level four. Now, what level three looks like is a lot of establishing processes. You read the e-myth in, um, or we talked about the e-myth, we talked about um, reading that in the last video. And it's all about systems and processes. A lot of this course has been about systems and processes. So hopefully you're starting to um, practice those things with discipline and consistency. Another thing that level three looks like is you're starting to implement strategy. You've played around with that in levels one and two, and it's time to just start doing it. Um, hopefully by now you've figured out what is gonna help your audience connect, and you're gonna be able to implement that um, consistently. And another thing I'd love to see people do in level three is um, blog a little bit more. Get your content out there, even if it's not written blogging, even if you're Instagramming on a regular basis or um, communicating via your preferred social media channels, it's getting that content out there. And that's essential for helping your audience connect with you and understand the value that you provide in your product or service. Now, problems that happen in level three um, are numerous. It's, it's very easy for ego to creep in at this point and a little bit of overconfidence. Um, you've done so much to get your business off the ground. You've experienced a little bit of success and it's hard to um, not let that go to your head. The big secret here is it, it's going to take other people. It's gonna take guides to help you move to level four. So if you're not at level four yet and you feel like you've been stuck at level three for a while, it might be because um, there are things out there that you still need to know to help you move your business forward. So for this reason, I highly recommend education and um, those of you who've invested in this e-course have made a great investment in um, just maintaining a teachable mindset to make sure that you get to that next level, you get to where you wanna go. Another thing that happens at level three is it's all about the sales. And this is a big rut where entrepreneurs get stuck as well. Um, as, your, as your expenses start to increase, you start to realize that you need more revenue um, to help cover those expenses. And some fear can start to creep in, which is not a good thing. Um, you need to remember to consistently be communicating um, your value, what your powers are, what your values and principles are. Those are the things that create value in your audience's mind. Um, and that can take your focus um, off the sell, sell, sell aspect of things that can start to actually turn an audience off. Um, another problem that happens at this level is as you start to build your team, either of employees or freelancers, communication can get harder across your team. So making sure you have um, a good communication platform on place um, for internal communications is essential. My team uses an app called Slack, and many of you have used that, those of you that are in the mastermind. 
levels and that Slack app can be really valuable for people in the levels three, four, and five of business for entrepreneurs in levels three, four, and five. Another thing that can be a struggle at level three is um, the founder can become indispensable. And that basically means that you're going to have all of these people coming to you, asking lots of questions, and it can be very overwhelming. Um, when that, when if, if, your, if your team starts to, to get much bigger than two or three people, sometimes communication can get muddy. And uh, making sure that different people on your team have answers so that people can go to each other instead of coming to you, um, that's very important. And building that takes time and effort. Another threat to entrepreneurs at level three is a lack of budgeting. So again, expenses are increasing and sales may not be increasing quite as much. And after you've had that first little taste of success, it's easy to think that that's always gonna carry forward and always gonna continue, but you need to sometimes pull back on the spending a little bit as different expenses come into play at level three. So ultimately in level three, there are a lot of things that can go wrong. But fortunately, making sure that you have the systems in place, making sure that you've prepared for those things can help you navigate those rough waters and get through level three to level four. Okay, so let's talk through some of the to-dos for level three. On your foundation, just making sure that you keep your priorities in place can be very important. So I've provided a quadrant worksheet for you. And the quadrant worksheet is based on the research of Stephen Covey in the seven habits of highly effective people. So printing out and utilizing that worksheet whenever you feel very stressed can really help you figure out what to focus on next. In terms of a good read, while you're at level three, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, is great for helping you solidify your core and really understand why it is that you're doing what you're doing and how you're helping your audience with, um, with who you are as a person. On framework, you're good. You've probably gained some clarity about what your archetype is from module two. So just remembering to keep your focus on that as you move forward is gonna be very important. Keeping your focus on that archetype is important because like that Einstein quote about um, life is kind of like riding a bicycle, in order to keep your balance, you just have to keep moving. And in order to keep your balance on a bicycle, you have to keep your eye on um, the prize, on the thing, um, the thing, on the things ahead. So, focusing on that archetype and on your goals as a business and a person can be very helpful for you in getting through some of the rough waters of level three. On your seven systems, um, hopefully in level two, you've really identified. Um, everything that you need to um, know to start connecting with your customers. So just make sure you keep listening to your audience when you're in level three. On website stuff, you don't need to push yourself. A, a decent website is fine at this point. Um, I'd like to see you have moved from um, an email sign up to some type of consistent blogging content that educates and connects with your audience or your customer. Just making sure that it's updated regularly might be the best thing that you can do for your website at this point. On your email system, this is where I'd love to see you um, start um, communicating with your audience on a regular basis. And to start out, I just recommend a once a month email. Remember not to talk about what you've done that month, but to talk about how what you've done is going to help and serve them and how that adds meaning and purpose to their, their life. For your content strategy, um, making sure that you have consistent key messaging established and that you are practicing that key messaging on a regular basis would be very important. Another thing that you could do at this stage is develop an editorial calendar. And there are lots of tools online. There's a WordPress plugin that's very popular as an editorial calendar. And um, I, on Rainmaker, which is the platform I use, there's actually a built-in editorial calendar that can be very handy. But um, you can also use a worksheet that we've provided to help you on that as well. On your social media strategy on level three, I'd love to see you um, do what Gary V um, kind of discusses in his book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. And there's a video for that that I can link to below this for you guys. But basically the premise of that is provide value, provide value, provide value, and then ask. 
So that's something that you can start to make sure that you practice um, in on your social media and this at this stage. For your funnel in level two, I hope that you've started providing free content. So consider adding a low priced option um, if you're at level three for helping you build out your funnel at this stage. Now in the administrative section of things, we're back to a few more details that you need to make sure that you put into place before you're going to be able to jump to level four. The first one of those things is a budget. Your expenses are starting to increase and it's very important for you as an entrepreneur to maintain a handle on that. So making sure that you've built that in is very important here. Another thing that you would, you're going to want to do, especially if you have employees, is create an employee handbook. Um, if you have independent contractors, maybe you don't do a handbook. Maybe you do some kind of culture um, ebook or some kind of document that you can send your contractors that explains how you operate as a team and how you value each other and how you want to work with other people. And that can be something that an independent contractor can read or a freelancer can read and decide whether or not they want to continue to work with you and be part of your team. Um, establishing a regular meeting schedule with important team members is something that you're going to want to implement at this point. And there's a great book that kind of touches on some different practices that you can implement here, and it's called Traction. So that's another suggestion. In terms of branding, just making sure that you've hit um, all of your brand touch points, uh, making sure that your brand is communicated consistently. We've got a checklist for you here that you can download on that one. Um, that's going to be very important for you as a brand. So the final question we get is how long can you expect to stay in level three? And this is actually the level where most creative entrepreneurs get stuck. It's easy to plateau. And when you start to, when that little bit of ego can start to creep in, you, um, you start to kind of shut down on the, the teachability um, angle of things. And that makes it hard to grow and progress as an entrepreneur. So I really recommend surrounding yourself with other people that you can learn from, people who um, are further along in their businesses than you are, who are willing to help you along the way. So building a great community around you for support is going to be important at this level. Another thing that, that keeps brands stuck at level three is you have to spend money to move to level four. It's just the bottom line. You're at level three, you're already probably employing yourself and maybe another part-time person. There's no way that you're gonna be able to do everything. And so building your team um, carefully and making sure that your team shares the same values you, you do and that you're building the kind of culture you want your company to, to emulate, that's gonna be very important for moving to level four. It just takes more than one person. And a lot of brands that I see stuck at level three um, are not moving forward simply for those two reasons. One, they're not surrounding themselves with people they can learn from, and two, they're afraid to spend money or they don't know where to spend it well. The answer about where to spend it is different for every business. It depends on your personal strengths and where you need to delegate and where you need to hire. Don't get discouraged about, um, about who you should hire. Don't get discouraged about the prices and things that different contractors and, and freelancers might be charging. You can definitely find someone to help you where you need to help you. And I would encourage you to, to do that in a calculated and strategic way so that you can get to, to level four, which is what we're going to talk about next.